those of you who don't know, my name is David Langford. I'm the Director of Athletics here at the Metropolitan Campus at Fairleigh Dickinson. And as you know, this is a very special day for us. Um, I've been teased uh, by how long this process took, and I'm constantly reminded by my wife that sometimes perfection just takes a little longer. It took us a while to figure out who we wanted to bring to campus to interview. It took us a while to figure which candidate was the right fit, and all indications are we made the right choice. Um, so the way this program will go this morning is I want to introduce to you our campus provost, Dr. Joseph Kiernan, who will make some remarks, and then I'll introduce to you our new coach and let him uh, share some words of wisdom with you. Dr. Kiernan. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Metropolitan Campus this morning, and as David said, it is a good day. This did take a little while, maybe longer than some wanted. Uh, we had 60 individuals uh, apply or be nominated for this position. We went through things very carefully. We had an, uh, an advising committee that was helping David to uh, uh, vet the various candidates and then conduct interviews. I have to say there was lively discussion among p different people involved, but among the, the group that uh, interviewed people, and I was at pres I was present for all the interviews. Greg was number one or number two on everybody's scorecard, and so I'm very happy that uh, Greg has decided to join the FDU Knights family. We look forward to our basketball program improving and returning to prominence and success. And uh, on the part of the administration, I'd like to welcome Greg to our campus community, and we look forward to working with him uh, through the administration and the faculty and the student body uh, in the years to come as our basketball program returns to prominence. So thank you all for coming, and uh, I'll turn it back to David. For those of you who haven't been here on campus and don't know about Fairleigh Dickinson's Metropolitan Campus Athletic Program, um, let me tell you that we have a rich tradition of scholar-athlete success. Um, our student-athletes do extremely well in the classroom. Our sports programs are competitive not only in the Northeast Conference, but nationally and regionally. Uh, we've had histories of national championships, Olympic champions, world champions, people who've gone on to do professional things and other things besides athletics. Our basketball program is the anchor of our program. It's the program that, that gives us the most attention. It's the, the program, frankly, that we hang our hat on. Um, it's no secret that we've been struggling for a while. And so this search process, part of the reason it took so long is that we had to figure out what it is we wanted. And so it came down to this. We wanted someone with experience building programs. We wanted someone who had an experience bringing in not just student athletes, but scholar athletes. We wanted someone who would engage the campus community and get them excited, not just about coming to basketball games, but engaging and becoming a part of our athletic department family. And so I've known Greg for a while. Um, I've been following his career. He's done remarkable things uh, at UMass Lowell, and we're very glad that he's decided to take the next chapter of his, his career and be here at Fairleigh Dickinson. So, Greg? Thank you, David. Thank you, David. So, is that big enough? Welcome to the Knights. <laughs> Thank you, David. All right. Appreciate it. People tell me I, I lose 10 years when I put a hat on. So I'm going to keep my hat on. Um, Bill, could you could somebody sit in this row, please? Bill, come right up. Vidal, come right up. Um, Pete, come right up. Sean, come right up. And Deb. If I didn't say Deb, I'd get in trouble already. Um, you know, today is a just a day of, for me, a day of thanks a day of pride, and a day of hope. As I look around this room and, and people that couldn't be here, I, I have so many people to be thankful for. 
30 years ago, I started my co college coaching career. Um, four years before that, I was a high school basketball player at St. Peter's Prep, and not a great one. But I played hard. I loved the game. And, and I've had great genes. My grandfather, and I have to thank my family first, my grandfather's name is Bill Bergen. When I was a young man, I didn't know how great a man he was, but he was inducted to the Brooklyn Basketball Hall of Fame on the same night as Lou Conaseca and Willis Reed. He played baseball with Babe Ruth and with Lou Gehrig and with my uncle Tony Calandriello, who ran a, a, a rec department in Hoboken, New Jersey, and my cousin Edward and my, and my grandfather's son, Bill Bergen, uh, and my cousin Edward Radigan are here right now, the two uh, kind of godfathers of our family, and I just want them to stand and thank them, uh, Uncle Billy and Cousin Eddie. Stand up, guys. <laughs> Joe, they don't understand that now they have to buy season tickets. <laughs> in, division, in Division Two. I used to give them, get them in the back door, but we got to raise some money here. And, uh, they will get prime seats. Yes. <laughs> I have much richer relatives that, uh, that are not here today. They're actually working. <laughs> My grandmother and grandfather, uh, on July 22nd, 1929, had twins, Adelaide and my mother, Grace, Horrenda. And everyone that knows me knows that I just have an affinity for women in every context. I just love honey. <laughs> uh, you talk about on cue. And she can do no wrong. But you come last in the thanks of the women. My mother won so many Garden State Senior Awards as an athlete. She was a tomboy. She used to watch Frank Sinatra play basketball in the rec center on Jefferson Street and play tennis and shoot baskets. And if you go to my office right now, the first picture is a picture of my mother shooting uh, a basketball with my son Trey at Elgin Community College. And my mother passed away six over six years ago, and she is so much a part of me and so much a driving force that today this dream would never have happened without her going to my high school games at St. Peter's Prep when we played Snyder when it wasn't a good thing to go to Snyder High School and play at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it would be all the Snyder fans, and it would be Father Azardo, Brother Wuss, and my mother, and I would be fearful that she would make it out of the gym alive. It was a tough place to play. She followed me. She did everything for me. Uh, uh, my father never played a game of basketball in his life. My father came from, uh, his grandparents came from Yugoslavia. He had a bad eye and he never played sports. But now I know the love that my father had for me because of my love for my son, Trey. Uh, he was a Stevens Institute of Technology graduate and helped develop the first nuclear power plant in the state of New Jersey, in Oyster Creek. I've been blessed with incredible family, and I'm going to bring that family atmosphere here. Uh, I have, you know, one of my first recruits at Lowell, John Carbaccio. He doesn't have any eligibility. Raise your hand, John. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Deb about it. We'll he, was out. <laughs> he was out for half a semester, and we're going to try to get him in. But you know, uh, and, and my other assistant, Brandon Arnett, which uh, was a great point guard at UMass Lowell. I, I, I've, I've been blessed. My in-laws, here's the story. I was offered the associate head coaching job at the University of New Hampshire after we were released at East Carolina University and Conference USA. And I was offered a very good job, and I turned it down, and I told Bill Harry and the head coach, and I said, Billy, I want to be a head coach. This is it. This is my time. And I took the head coaching job at Elgin Community College in Elgin, Illinois. And I lived seven years ago in the basement of my mother, of my uh, father-in-law and mother-in-law's home in Chicago with my son 
and with my wife to get to this point. I can never be more thankful for the people that have just outreached to me and have given me opportunities so that I can get to this place right now. Um, I'm so deeply touched. Without my in-laws, I couldn't do anything. I'm a great recruiter, David. I told you that. I'm gonna, I got the MVP, the McDonald's, All-American game, Shaheen Holloway. Shaheen, could you step up and take a hand, baby? <laughs> but I got one better recruit than Shaheen. I got a lot of them, but it, it's my wife. And I was in Hoboken, New Jersey again, and I was supposed to meet up with a bunch of people, and I was on the telephone talking to Carlos Clark, who was a recruit from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I saw a woman cross Washington Street, and she had a red jacket on and jeans and black boots. And I'm like, got a chance. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, I don't know how many years to the day, I went back to that same phone booth and proposed. And uh, my life has, has never, ever been the same. It's, it's been greater and greater in each day. And uh, I just have to thank publicly my wife, uh, Jill Horrenda. Jill, would you stand up?